Larry McKinley interview, April 20th, 2004, as part of the uh, Contemporary New Orleans Oral History Project on Ernest Dutch mm -hmm. Morial. Okay, anytime you're ready. Yes, sir. Um, okay, Connie. Connie Atkinson, I know Connie, George yeah. Winston and Eric right. Hardy right. are two of our graduate students at the Department of History Great. Uh, at the University of New Orleans, your neighbor over here. Um, George is doing work on the police and police brutality during the uh, 60s and that mm -hmm. period. Right. And uh, Eric is, our, uh, is, is an urbanologist at Urban uh, Political History and also is active, also works within the New Orleans political thing. Mm -hmm. Now, we all know that you're a pillar of New Orleans music, and New Orleans music is my love, mm -hmm. and uh, you're a, one of the um, most important people in the history of New Orleans music. You brought modern jazz, along with everything else you've done, right. to a lot of people in New Orleans, right. and you were quite a, a radio pioneer, and, and, uh, and also um, very admired in the music industry, and we could talk about that forever, but today we're going to talk about politics. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. And, as you know, of course, music from the earliest days in New Orleans has always been intertwined with politics. Sure. Where a lot of power is. Right. And the radio, of course, is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And our project is on Dutch Morial. And what we narrowed it to, because we could go forever, is we're really interested in New Orleans. Okay, here you have New Orleans before the Voters' uh, Right Act of 1965. Mm -hmm. uh, New Orleans' political reality uh, with the strong black community and, and the New Orleans, the ethnic mix within the black community is mm -hmm. very diverse. Right. Sometimes ignored when people outside New Orleans are studying New Orleans. But anyway, but you've got this, and then the voter right act. Right. And then everything changes. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to be in that place when Dutch Morial gets it in his head to run for mayor and the idea that he could win. And then people that even supported him thinking he couldn't win, and right. how it happened. We're particularly interested in, um, we're also interested in that layer of people who said they represented the people, the bowls, the coops, or whatever, and mm -hmm. how much impact they really did or didn't have. Mm -hmm. And how it happened. Well, you were there. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I remember <clears throat> Dutch, um, well, he was a judge. Yes, sir. And there was some talk that if he ran for mayor, that he'd have to give up his judgeship. Oh, uh, excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, hello? Somebody trying to send a fax. I don't know how. Well, I could take it off the hook. That's what I could do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, want to start over? No, that's no. all right. That's all right. So, okay. <clears throat> so anyway, um, there was some talk that if he ran for mayor, that he'd have to give up. To just not if he won, he would have to, if he to run, he would have to give up his judgeship. So I asked him, uh, "Was he, what would happen?" I said, "If if they, they were going to rule on it." So I said, "If they rule that you have to give up your judgeship, what are you going to do?" So he told me, he said, "You know, people get all hung up on security." He says, "If they tell me I have to give up the judgeship, let them have it." And I never will forget that. He said, I, I have made up my mind. And, and at the time, the African-American vote was the minority, quote, no pun intended, vote. But the majority was the general public. So um, naturally, he was the underdog. And uh, he just went out and we campaigned. Because we, again, we were a little apprehensive, but he was such a optimistic force, such a, such a, a guy that was, that, he was so strong in his beliefs that he would make you feel like, okay, if you say you can do it, we believe you can do it, and we'll give it all. Uh, at the time, I was on the radio. I had my talk show there. This was in 1977. I left the radio. Well, that won't be but a second. I left, I left the radio in 71 from DJing to concentrate on my then wife, Margie Joseph's yeah. career. So we stayed off there, I stayed off there for about four years, five years. And then Ed Munez had WNNR radio. So he asked me to come on back. I said, well, I'm tired of not being on the radio. So, then, so from 75 uh, until about 77, I played music on this daytime. And then Ed and I got together and decided on 
let's try talk radio because it's an AM and FM was so strong then. And not only that, we were an AM daytimer, which meant we were only on from sunrise to sunset. So it was awfully hard to, to keep an audience. I mean, we could have the audience, but then sunset, we have to go. So people changed the dial. And that means they got to go back, wait till the next morning, come back to us again, you know. So we did the, the talk show. And actually, what I did with the music on WYLD, with the music show, the same thing happened with the talk show. We were able to get all the money for the Martin Luther King statue. We raised all of that money. We raised money for the Andrew J. Bell School for Uniforms. I got plaques all over from Southern University uh, uniforms. Uh, we just were able to do so much good with the talk show because the African American com community had no, no outlet. If we had one right now, we could really be dealing with the crack situation. But anyway, it's so Dutch, you know, uh, we talked about it, so I had to talk show. And then uh, I, I kind of used it. We had the people's poll and all that, and you know, bam, 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 we, well, we had to drive. Then we had a, so we had a crusade going. So um, I had the, the Neville brothers, we did, instead of Hey Pockaway, we did Hey Mario to this moon. <laughs> Uh, Cyril and you know all the, all of the you know, Aaron, all of them. So instead of doing "Hey Parkway," to "Hey Moriel," and um, then there's another song out the Double Dutch, uh, Double Dutch Jump or something, you know. Yeah. So we did the Double Dutch, and I mean, oh. Um, so with the power of the radio, we really could mo we mobilized the African American community because it was a crusade. The first African American mayor, and uh, he was such a dynamic you know, candidate himself. So then some people were saying, well, he was, he had passed, some of the opposition said he passed for, as a Caucasian. So he came on the show and he, he brought all his ID from the service and all, and he said, look, how can I pass a Caucasian? I was the first black to go to LSU, I was the first black this, I was the first black that, I was the first black, I was like, so. But uh, he, he was a great candidate and uh, he was a force, he was dynamic. Mm -hmm. Early, early, early days. Mm -hmm. Who told you you were crazy in the black community? Oh, uh, nobody. Really? No, no. I mean, uh, well, in the general community, you know, basically, they don't know much about politics. They don't. The average person doesn't really care that much about politics. Now, the people who might have been involved in politics, they wouldn't say that because they know this little guy was something. Because he's already been the first on so many things, you know. So they didn't want to. They want to take a chance on him. And. Um, we had two great campaigns because in the second, when he ran for re for reelection, there was a lot of competition there. Yeah, Ron Forche was one, one of the candidates there, and he they gave a good battle. Uh, Donald Mintz, I think, was one of his opponents too. Uh, Joe DeRosa, one of DeRosas. Uh, in, in the first election. Yeah, right. Well, before Dutch, the, well, I didn't go. Before Dutch, it was Moon, yeah. and uh, the community loved Mo Moon, and I really wasn't into politics then. I was when Moon was there. I was doing my music, and uh, one of the fellows introduced me to him. Said, "You know, this Moon, this he is a great guy." I says, "Quick, what can you do for him?" And I wasn't didn't have no talk show, so all I could do was say, "Well, we got this, uh, got this." Request here to play Moon Over New Orleans and uh, fly me to the moon. Uh, it must have been moon glow. <laughs> it's only a paper moon. <laughs> so you were so that idea of people saying. Yeah. Uh, but when Dutch came, you decided to get involved. Right, because when Dutch came, I have got into the talk show thing. Yeah. See, before I was just I was just enjoying playing music and being, you know, DJing and doing that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that it was so much in, so involved. Yeah. Whereas now, you know, <clears throat> you get uh, the same thirty or forty songs over and over, month in, month out. 
year in, year out. I've heard, and I love Luther Vandross, but I hear some Luther Vandross for the same song now for two and a half years. Now he's got new things out, but I still hear some of the old things still. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you see by the conglomerates owning all these stations, um, they really, you know, say, okay, they also may own a piece of the record company or a piece of the publishing. So if, say, for Clear Channel, they may own 1,100 stations. If they got all kinds of investments, so their stuff can be played all over, the, you know. Yeah. Back then, the DJ could have more impact. Oh, yeah, we had a lot of freedom. Nobody told you to quit saying moon too much or something? No, like well, I was the program you? director. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, kind of how do you think he was able to um, muster together the, 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 the black folk that he did? Because you know there's like some other candidates that um, had some support in the black community, like Tony Morrison and um, Nat Kiefer. How do you think he was able to consolidate that black folk? Uh, again, the radio, we had the radio. And Nat was a good guy. Nat, Nat was... He was a fine guy. He, he, I think it hurt him because he thought he was going to be the mayor. And he could well have been a, the mayor and a good mayor, I believe, too. I think, I think again, uh, not trying to pat myself, but just the fact, could have been anybody else. I think with the fact that we had the radio, it was the time, it was the talk show. Uh, and then when you got to meet him, when they have rallies, he was such a dynamic speaker. And he was so sincere. Um, I think that was it. Did any of the other guys ever approach you about by you being in such a unique position mm -hmm. to, um, to get black folks, by you being on the radio and right. like, communicating with African Americans about any of, any of the other candidates approach you before uh, they knew, you know? No, because actually Dutch was my first, the first candidate that I really went out for, uh -huh. you know. Cause he I, came to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, more than the other candidates, realized your position. Right. right. We, had, we had a meeting over at his house on Harrison. There were four people, Russ Henderson, uh, Gail Terry, and one other person, who was a lady, and myself. And we just sat there, and just the four of us, and uh, that's when we really talked about him giving up the judgeship and all that kind of thing, and he was, how sincere he was about it. It was just was the four. There? Yeah, Dutch and Sybil, yeah. They, they, it was just those was six of us. The four of us and Dutch and Sybil, and uh, and we just went. I'm sure he had other meetings with other people, but that was the four that that was the one I was involved in. He didn't have much money, so that was really. Oh no! Money. You know we had I think, I think about ninety five thousand dollars. It was just about ninety. I think it was ninety five thousand, because he couldn't raise money. Right. The first time I ever signed, I signed a note for a thousand dollars. You know, with the bank, and. Uh, I was shaking like a leaf. I was saying a thousand dollar note. They said, "Well, we, you know, we win. We gonna have a fundraiser. You know, we get it all back. You know." I said, "Oh, okay." Yeah. <laughs> I said a thousand dollar. Yeah. You were those fundraisers we actually saw last week. Mm -hmm. um, some brochures, mm -hmm. and you were the the uh, master of ceremony at some of those. Yeah. So you yeah. had a lot of. Investment in this. I worked. I, not only did I work hard, but I've given my money too. I said, "You got, you fella, you got to win, man." <laughs> who came to these fundraisers? Who, who supported him earlier? Uh, just a small clique of people that that, that believed him because he only had ninety five thousand. Yeah. So there were, weren't too many. Yeah. So, so like for your show, when when y'all did the show, did you have like a um, like some kind of clearly defined media strategy? You and him, you and he, did you guys have like a, a plan? No, like when you're on the show to, to try to promote it. I know you talked no. about earlier how um, he kind of like, um, he kind of used it, you know, to yeah. sort of promote it. But um, did you guys have a, a plan or a media strategy? Uh, only when it came down to making purchases and making media buys. But you got to remember when I interviewed him on my show, I had to interview all of the candidates. Uh -huh. oh. So I had to give them all equal time. But where I could do different after that, you know, they all got equal time. Those everybody was invited, and then when we do the people's poll, uh -huh. that's it. But it wasn't set up. I mean, but the people. I mean, you say the people's poll, and someone called and said, "Okay, now the Dutchman, three to one, and another, and the Dutch and the Dutchman." Somebody, okay, here's one for so and so, and the Dutchman. Did it. But the people's poll, and he would swarm it, and then, then the people began to feel a part of this thing. You know, so I said, "Well, the people say." Dutch, you're going to be the mayor. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the people's pose, eh? you know. You weren't surprised, though. Uh, uh, yeah, but it was, and again, 
I think um, the African American in the New Orleans then was only about forty eight percent. I think. I think uh, only only forty people. Whereas now we're sixty five percent or whatever. It was only forty eight percent. So it was, you know. He said he had to get some crossover vote. Yeah. I think he got maybe. I don't know the facts, but I think maybe seventeen percent for the white vote or something. He got. Yeah, in the final, in the in the what was that in the final election? Twenty something. Uh, first, the, the primary, he received seven uh, percent for the white vote, mm -hmm. and then in the uh, runoff, runoff, he had uh, twenty-one. Yeah. 21.6. Yeah. So really well. there was a big surge on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were listening mm -hmm. to you on the radio. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well. Mm -hmm. How did they support him or not support him? I, I assume. I, I really don't know. I, I guess they were with him. You didn't I, I don't know. I, I don't know, of course. I, I just don't know. They I were. imagine they were. I, I don't know whether coup. Those, in fact, like I said, I wasn't so in, into politics. Yeah. Like I was just one-on-one -on -one with him. I knew about Seoul, but only because I knew Don Hubbard and, uh, and uh, Sherman and uh, Douglas. I knew them, but uh, I assume that they organized because I wasn't in that part of his campaign. I was mostly in the, like in the media strategy and writing the commercials and producing. The, see all these jingles. In fact, I've told Bill Jefferson. I said, you know, we created a monster with with these jingles. I said, but we had a reason. Now every time they come out, every every, every campaign, there's somebody with some kind of silly jingle. Well, you know, for whatever office, which makes they just want to have a jingle. But what do you mean we had a reason? Well, our reason was we had a crusade, and we said, keep, keep Dutch, keep the driver. Then I had the Neville brothers, like I said, and, and hey, Park away, hey, Morial. And it was, it was a crusade to get the first black mayor. Yeah. And that's how we got everybody. We have my little daughter, Dana, who teaches third grade over at Littlewoods now. She, um, she was a youngster then. And so she would, uh, we had kids going in the neighborhood with the legal pad and having people sign that they're going to vote. And the little kids would knock on the doors. And, and uh, Yeah, well, it, 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 it wasn't even if they weren't registered to at least sign off a pledge to vote. Yeah. And if you haven't vote, pledged to vote, you'll go register. One of my neighbors around the corner there, Rose, her mother had just passed. So Rose went out and voted. And she went back and voted. For her mother, she said, "Mom would." She said, "Mom would have been proud, mom, because of my, she said mother would have been proud because I know mother would have voted." So she voted twice that day. That's a Louisiana tradition. Yeah, but her mother had passed maybe a week or two, or maybe a month before this election. Which she, she said, I'm, "I'm going back as my, my mother would have been proud." She voted. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Voter yeah. registration must have been real important. They gave yeah. Reason to register. Sure. And my little daughter Dana. I would always, all my girls, when they grew up, when we go vote, I would always take them in the booth, or their mother would, to get them involved in voting. Really? So Dana, she, uh, she voted. I mean, you know, I'm not sure which switches to pull, you know, and all. So she went back and she went to school and said, yeah, I voted, I voted for Dutch. <laughs> and she said, you didn't vote? You didn't vote? You're too young to vote. She said, yes, I did vote too. Uh, <laughs> so nice. they all, it's all a part of their life, of voting, you know. So you saw it as Sure, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you Eric? mentioned uh, that it was a crusade to get the first black mayor elected. Mm -hmm. What did it mean to you personally to have a black mayor as opposed to a white mayor in the executive office? Well, yeah, actually, uh, I like Moon. So it really, that part wouldn't have mattered if it had been another like a Moon. But just the fact that it was a breakthrough, it was a time for a change. I, so I was really enthused. It, it had me hyped up just to see. Now, if it had been a lesser guy, maybe maybe he wouldn't have even won. But that was yeah. my next question. Right. Um, so do you, do you think there was something uh, just a little different about him that set him apart from the average candidate? Yeah, because he had so many firsts to begin with. He, had, he was, he was the, the first judge here and the, and the first black to go from LSU. And, he, you know, he had a track record. It wasn't just like somebody popped up and said, okay, I'm going to run for mayor. So he, and he had a track record. It's just like Judge Augustine. Judge Augustine had a, you know, he was just a great guy and he, and people loved him and he. Uh, yeah. I understand that uh, as a state legislator, that Dutch has helped get him appointed in some way, some form of fashion, if it involved 
Probably. Mm -hmm. State. Probably, yeah. Some with the right. But um, you mentioned also that uh, you had to give equal airtime to each candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how were the shows structured? You had a, a talk show. Right. Did you give him questions? Give uh, candidates questions? Mm -hmm. Did you just right for, unless we talk, we interviewed him, and that's it. And uh, nothing was prepared. Uh, I don't know where they are. That's been so long. Probably not. I had a lot of tapes, but then I had them up in my attic. And in 1981, my house caught fire, electrical up in, and all that. A lot of it was just most of all of it was destroyed up there. But uh, yeah, because we had to tape every show in case of uh, you know suits or whatever. Yeah. So, um, so you just have a conversation. Yeah. Could people call in at the time to ask questions? Yeah, we 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 what we would do? We would uh, have some dialogue. And then we'd have to call in. And, but nothing was ever prearranged. We're not even with Dutch. Where we didn't, and then, yeah. you have, uh, it's been so long ago, would you have people asking, looking for certain things from him? Or, uh, or was it just mainly people calling in to give their support and say, hey, we're all here for you? Well, some would ask questions, or whatever question would be on their mind. Uh, then some would just go ahead and give their support. The only thing about it, when I would have one of the other candidates, they wouldn't get that many phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. What was the biggest hesitation that people would have about Dutch? Like, well, the only when the opponents would say something like he was trying to pass, that he used to pass for white or something like that. that. Was the big thing, yeah. yeah. Other than that, they couldn't say anything about him. And he had an answer for that. You know? He, so that yeah. was the big Yeah. Big yeah. Now, you, you mentioned that um, this was an AM station. Mm hmm. That's right. Um, so what sort of, could you guess, what sort of um, listenership the radio, well, how many people could you reach? Well, I'll tell you, I'll give you a good example. I got up on the wall. Like, let's see. If you can reach, look on the wall, by those pictures, by, see where Irma Thomas mm -hmm. and Eartha Kitt? To the left of that, bring that, pull that, mm -hmm. that came from uh, Figaro. All right, see that? that? That'll tell you the impact. Go ahead, you can see that. That shows you the impact uh, of the station right there. People to know. The most powerful people in New Orleans. And there he is. Right. And you see how they categorize it? See, they got P, you know, like broadcast. You, you notice the symbols on there? What, what did they have by my name? Then they have the. the Let's see, McKinley. You got everything. <laughs> no, you got about Political, see? media, and black community. Yeah, so, so that's, that's, that shows you the impact. That shows, that shows you the impact of that, that daytime. Uh, and that you can see, look at some of the other names. Yeah. And that, that'll show you the impact of that daytime station. And look at that top. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. That is, that is a huge impact because even Phil Johnson, of course, the station uh, director of WWL, right. got an M. Right. Right. <laughs> Media. And yeah. there were some other some people on there, you know, that, you know, big people at the time, you know. Oh, yeah. This is, this is everybody. Do you think it, um, it put the station and you in a more political direction after this? Mm hmm. Definitely. Uh, right. Just to address issues, uh, whatever. Yeah, the talk show. So we went, we went all talk. <laughs> From there on, you know, oh, really? that's, mm -hmm. so that's when we went on. We went on to all talk. Um, I think at one point, no, we we talked in the morning, and then I think we had some talk, uh, maybe around four o'clock until sign off. In between, they had you know had DJs. Mm -hmm. You know, the media starts getting on his back like they do with, uh, right. with any politician. Mm -hmm. And toward the end, you know, he's fighting a lot. Uh, right. fight. Were you pleased with his, with what he did? I mean, you were mm -hmm. trying to get him elected. He's elected. Were you mm -hmm. pleased with his um, issues and what he did for the city? Yeah, I think he did. The, the, what he did, I think he did with, in his heart, 
what he thought was best for the city, even when he closed down uh, Mardi Gras one year. I mean, that took a bold step to do that. But he felt there was, that was what needed to be done. Um, near the end, he got a reputation of being irritable, uh, feisty and arrogant and all that. But that's, that was his personality anyway. They just began to know him. <laughs> he, uh, he was a pleasant guy if you knew him, but if you crossed him, I mean, that's just the way he was, you know? Yeah. That was the strategy to get him defeated, maybe. Yeah. What about his third term? What I, did you think about that? I thought that was very unwise. Yeah. And I told him. I told him. I said, I don't think, I don't know. I said, I, I, and I thought when he ran for the council, I told him then. I said, step back. What's what? I, because I was that close, and I, see, I could tell him this because I didn't have a job. I wasn't looking for a job or anything, so I could tell him the way I feel. I said, well, I said, well, you know, Dutch, I'm with you, I mean, but I mean, that's a step down. I said, in the third term, I said, this guy here, I said, you wait four years, you come back, you can knock him off. Because I know how Hank Braden and would talk to Sidney talk down to him like, you know, like, you know, like we, you know just, just give him no respect, not in public. But I was in the radio station, we were cutting a commercial, a uh, radio commercial for Sydney. And, um, and I saw how the guy talked to him. And I was saying to myself, if that talked to me like that, I'd slap him. But I mean, you know, so I didn't, I know he was weak. Yeah. A nice guy, beautiful fellow as a person, but I thought he was weak. And I feel, still feel that his administration was weak. Even if we're on tape, I do. How do you think he handled the police um, Who, his, um, administration? Dutch? Dutch? Yeah, as far as like the strike and the Yeah, he, he handled them with, with, with the fist. He was, yeah, he was. the first two. Yeah. So, right? Yeah, because yeah, he, he, you see, before, the Jerusos and all that, the police were, you know, they just was like a police state over. Random one. Yeah, they could do what they want. And uh, I don't think the police ever really uh, endorsed him because he fought them all the way. But in the black community, that was a huge issue then. Sure. Yeah. Well, the, the whole city was being. Uh, right. Because you see, the city was, the white community also was being browbeaten by the police. There was road cops. Not all police were bad, of course. But uh, I think most, now, I think the Black Order of Policemen, Organization of Police, the BOP, they were with Dutch. Yeah, if I remember, they were with him. They didn't have as many black policemen as they have now, though. Yeah. I, I noticed um, um, a black uh, uh, nice Peter Claver. Mm -hmm. Were you involved in any of these fraternal organizations or no. uh, social clubs at any point? No, there was, uh, it must have been an award I got. Is up there by the, right. the speaker? Exactly. Yeah, that was at St. Peter Claver. No, that was St. Peter Claver. Okay. That was a music, okay. a music legend. Yeah. Now, you, you did mention like um, his uh, perceived irritability. Mm -hmm. Morales. Yeah. Um, can you get a sense of like how, uh, of course you can't speak for the white community. But right. But do you have any idea like what, what, what does it seem, the, um, how the white community Mm -hmm. to the first black mayor, particularly one who had ideas of his own and didn't fall into a position, say, like Sidney Bartholomew. Mm -hmm. um, can you... I think it was a little shock. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for somebody to come back and snap right back at it like a little bulldog, you know? Just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we wouldn't expect you to do this. Say this. Huh? I said, well, you can expect more of this, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. integrated, really was the first to really integrate right. Hall, right. and, and interacted with the black community mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, that it was more of a traditional kind of, um, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And a different, um, with, with Moriel, we're getting the feeling, especially we're interviewing women involved, mm -hmm. that it was the best person for the job, black or white or male or female, right. not so much... Um, Black, white divide. Did you feel that with with Morial? 
Yeah, I, yeah, I, in a sense. Um, speaking of groups, though, yeah. there was a group that was an offshoot of so-called Roots, I think. That was Tom Jasper. Now, if you went against Dutch, he remembered you. <laughs> and he was, you know, he was sarcastic. So w one time we had a fundraiser. It wasn't for Dutch, it was just a political reason. So Tom was there. So we were all over right in a little area, Dutch and this our little group. So Tom was standing over there. So Dutch says, come on over, Tom. Tom, don't be sitting over there by yourself, Tom. You can come over here, Tom. He was fun. We, we used to enjoy it. We'd have the wild duck dinners, I mean the wild game dinners uh, once a year over at the, the Greek, well, it started off at Dookie Chase, the first one we'd have. And then it, it, the first one was at Dookie Chase. That's how small the group was, upstairs over Dookie Chase. And then by the time it ended, it was over at the big hall at the Greek over here by City Park. Yeah. And it was a wild game. It, and, and Leah Chase would do the cooking though. And they would have wild duck, and they would have the greens and all that. And then by the time he, he left, I mean, the place was packed. There'd be hundreds of people uh, were invited. But the original group, that couldn't have been no more than 20 or 25 of us over Dookie Chase in the was second place. Friends of Dutch? Or mm -hmm. It was a fundraiser or just something fun? No, it wasn't even a fundraiser. just a, a get-together once a year. They'd have his, the wild game down there. So he remembered his pals? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I said it could have been maybe 25 original at Ducky Chase. Well, I remember that, um, you know, I was at Figaro for a while, and mm -hmm. he and Iris Kelso just went at it. And, Eric, you know, Iris was, excuse me for cutting it, yeah, go ahead. she was the only woman that was ever, it was, it was always a stag. Iris was the only woman he that, that ever made it, that was invited. He invited her to the Iris event. was the only one that he invited. That's an example of what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. They went at it hammer and tongs. Yeah. They Mm -hmm. And uh, we think, gosh, she just hates him. She yeah. just loves him. You know, pick up the phone and call him. Yeah. I didn't understand that relationship. He, it's like he didn't mind the fights. Right. But he didn't suffer fools lightly. And if you crossed him or if you weren't straight with him, you were off his list forever. That's it. Well, the last one we had, I think that was the only one. Iris was there. She was the first woman, the first and only woman, other than Leo Chiefs who was cooking, who was a chef. The only one that was a guest there. And he even had to stand up and, and honor Iris. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. What, and so you were a personal friend. Did he tell you when things bothered him? What, what uh, hurt his feelings? What bothered him? What, what? Only if we just happened to be, he wouldn't call me up and say, I want to yeah. cry on your shoulder. But if we happened to be in a certain, together in the same company, um, I question, there's one of those pictures here with up here on the wall somewhere on my where we were hugging and Oh, I guess it's over there. Where we were, oh, yeah. yeah, we there's your best wall. So I was just wondering what broke his heart. Did it, did, this what disappointed him? Who disappointed him? He may have, maybe only when he ran for the third term. Maybe that hurt him more. Maybe that uh that and maybe also the council. Those two defeats. Other than that, he hadn't had any defeats. That's true. Yeah. He was mostly a winner, wasn't he? Yeah. And then Mark did the same dumb thing. <laughs> to, 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 you know, he could probably have waited. But since after when he ran, now all this negative stuff now is through with him now. But if he just quit, probably a lot of stuff that's going on now wouldn't have been out, all this negative stuff on him. And maybe he could have come back if he wanted to in four years. Same thing that drives him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. say a great job. What do you think in, in the black community in the city we were, he brought to us? I think revitalization of some uh, CBD, um, getting more African Americans involved in politics. I think those are the two parallels. I don't know economically what he has done, but you know. Has it changed everything from those two Yeah, days? yeah, yeah. Do you think we've had anybody like him? Do you think Mark was like 
in in a sense, in 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 a, in a I guess in a vague sense, somewhat he had somewhat of the temperament uh, Dutch. He was sweeter than Dutch, but he was as mean as Dutch too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He camouflaged a little better than Dutch because Dutch, he you could know Dutch, you know. Yeah. See, Mark can give you a little smile and hug you like that. Yeah, a little civil. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Like you never saw the city pushing the entertainment, right. the, the culture of the city. Right. I mean, you wouldn't have seen Moon using the Neville Brothers. I mean, it was like no. all uh. the pamphlets. It always was the poor. Mm. Whatever. Mm -hmm. did, did, I know Dutch wasn't a music person, really, was he much? Was no, I don't, he didn't, uh, I didn't see him go out there jigging like, like Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess, you know, also when Moon was here, they had plenty of oil. Yeah, it was true. so they had a better economy, so he didn't well, have when to. When the hole went down the tubes, all of a sudden everybody starts looking around, saying maybe we ought to do something about music. Mm -hmm. Did Dutch encourage any of that, or would, did you? See no, that? no, I didn't see Dutch really pushing music. Yeah. I mean, uh, no, I never seen him really just go out like like Mark, for an example. Right. I didn't see him push music. Because we didn't but, have a music industry in this town, never did no, really. No, no, and we had it here, but it was laying there dormant. The musicians were here, the talent was here, but like you said, it was just pushed aside, you know, just took it for granted. Uh, people all over the world would come here yeah. and love our music, and we didn't promote it ourselves. And the New York, yeah. Los Angeles record companies would come and record it. Sure, yeah. Any, any England. Idea why you think that it, I mean, why do you think there was never a, uh, any, any guesses why you think there was never a recording industry that, you know, took root in the city? No, because when we had our record company, Minute Records, yeah. we went all over the world. You know, we, well, we joined up with Imperial because at the time, Joe Banaschek and I, we owned 50% of the company. And then we included Alan Toussaint in. So, but um, Imperial Records, Lou Chud, who had Fats Domino and uh, other big artists. I don't know if Ray was with Imperial, but no, no Fats was the big one. And he had some others. So, Richard too, huh? No, I don't think Richard was with special. I don't oh, think I don't think yeah. Richard. Right, right. But anyway, he uh Lou Chud wanted to buy in. He was a millionaire. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to buy into our company. So he said, Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll buy in. I want fifty percent. So I told my partner Joe, I said, Look, I'd rather have twenty five percent of this millionaire than fifty percent of what we got here, you know. Because he had the distribution, national and international distribution and all. So um so that, and then at the time, also there was uh, Specialty Records was here. So there was a lot of recordings coming out of here. Little Richard used to come down here and record, Ray Charles. So uh, not to mention Irma and all, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of recordings came from, they used Lean you know, as musicians. And how about Cosimo? Didn't he try to, he had a thing where he was trying to build it up and then it all kind of fell apart. Yeah, Cos, we all recorded it at his studio. Then he formed a record company and publishing, and then just wanted, like you said, he wanted to do everything. And then what would happen, um, it cost so much money. So, and then all of a sudden, musicians weren't, get, weren't getting their royalties. And so over here, he just said, well, where's my money? I'm, working, I'm with your recording coming out, where's the money? And he finally, he went into bankruptcy. Yeah, distribution, you have to have another record coming behind your record to get paid for the first one. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. It's too big. You get too big. Right. But at that period, like you had all these people come into town, and these DJs were so important. They'd take these guys, the, the record company people, like Lucha and them would say, they'd drive them around to do drop and all, and say, mm -hmm. record them. Then they'd record them. And these DJs would try out the records in town, and they'd say, well, when New Orleans, they'd take with them. And, and yeah, well, a lot of times they'd say, well, if we can, well, if you got a demo, so how, sometimes... Well, like Ray Charles or James, some of the ones that I, were clo I was close to would say, okay, now listen, I just made to cut this session. Listen to what you think ought to be the, the single. I said, well, I don't know what the people are going to buy. I can tell you what I think, what I like, you know, because sometimes when the record would come out, they have it the A side 
and the B side turns out to be yeah. the it. So you never know what the public is going to buy, but we've, you know, we, we do, they would ask us to get our input on what we thought they would, the people would like. Sometimes we'd be right, not too often. But the banks, everything <laughs> was so, the segregation was that it hard, hardened at that time. I mean, what, mm -hmm. Yeah, and on the music, uh, of course, we played, I played whoever's music was good. Yeah. The Osmonds, uh, everybody thought that the Osmonds thought it was the Jackson 5 when they did One Bad Apple. <laughs> so I'm playing the Jackson 5 and some people say, hey, how about uh, playing the other, that new Jackson 5? I can't say, well, that's a white group. I said, okay, I'll play, you want to hear the Osmonds? Okay, I can play the Osmonds. <laughs> yeah. the, the banks, all the things that when the oil company came in, right. you know, now they say, Right. Learned it real fast. right. But, uh, you know, the banks learned how to loan money. Right. You know, like I remember Alan Toussaint said he went, he wanted to borrow money on his points. He said, well, how do we know that record company's not going to run out of business? Well, you know, yeah. it's not. You've got to get your uh, points. Yeah, yeah. And um, it, it was interesting to me, like, then we have the first black mayor. Suddenly it seemed, because he wasn't really into it, it was, we missed an opportunity. It was still when you could have. Maybe encourage the, he had the backing of the, um, the business community, right. I think, a lot. And he yeah. was uh, trying to get New Orleans to get a better reputation mm -hmm. in Atlanta. He'd done and made money. Right. And Memphis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, I mean, uh, it just seems that his particular not being that interested in He it, really didn't. Do you think no, there's he, anything mm. for it to ever happen? Well, I always, there's always hope. Um, it seems like now... The city is, it seems like they're trying to promote music. It looks like, it looks, this, I see the biggest effort now. Now, Mark tried. Mark really tried with Jackie Harris and that group. They, they really tried. She really did try to promote. And they did. They did a good job. Jackie did, to me, I'll say Jackie did a very good job. Uh, right, right. And then the ticking groups to, to Africa. Look, Damon uh, Baptiste right now. They got a connection. They take him to, to Johannesburg and... Um, so they are they're promoting it now, but it started with Mark really promoting the music. And it's performance, isn't it? Which mm -hmm. always was. Right. Too much recording studios. No, well, at, at one time we were hot. Well, uh, back there with the minute, yeah, we, we, we were hot then, uh, because like I said, there were a Barone Street, an 800 block Barone was like record row, all the distributors and all that right there on Barone Street, uh, Delta Records. Uh, Mercury Records, uh, Delta Distributors, Mercury Records, uh, Joe Asunto and um, Joe Rafino and all this. Their boys, their boys, was it Rick and Ron? Uh, Ron Records, right. So that was all record row. And if they had had like tax breaks, the state right, had been, right. I think uh, it was rhythm and blues. You know? And, you know, and, and, and then you would hear New Orleans music in New Orleans. If you were getting in your car, if you were going to Memphis, when you, by the time you got near Memphis, Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and all that, you heard Memphis music. By the time you got to Detroit, you heard Motown. When you came to New Orleans, you heard New Orleans music. But now you hear the same thing generic over and over. But you really could tell where, where you would say, oh boy, I'm most near New Orleans. Because you could hear, you would hear, not nowadays, you'd hear Kermit Ruffin, and you'd hear other than, other than WWOZ, you don't have it anymore. Yeah. Because the, the the stations, the commercial stations, they all play the same music over and over. Yeah. Right. And it's very difficult to break into that loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost impossible. It is. It's going to be something so vanilla. New Orleans ain't going to like it anymore. No. <laughs> and they don't even play Aaron Neville. I know. I mean, he, he can have a hot record. could be number, number three on in Billboard. And you won't hear it. On, only time you hear New Orleans music on commercial stations is doing Mardi Gras. And they'll play It Ain't My Fault, they'll play a couple of brass band tunes. That's it. What do you think of this, um, uh, like Master P and all this record player? I think he's a smart guy. Yeah, he's, he's no doubt about it. He's a brilliant businessman. I'm not into, I can't say I'm not into, I don't really knock rap. I just, the lyrics. I like the beat. I like the idea. I've heard some, I heard some good. I, and one thing about it, if you had a party, and they play some rap. You can really dance now. They they got they got a groove now. <laughs> I don't I don't like the, all that profanity and all the other things. But 
They, they've got a groove. Well, Master P's uh, son takes over all that profanity's going to go out, right? He says he's going to take care of all that. Uh-huh. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but one thing won't be his brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, cause I, I was wondering what the city, you know, could do. I know in, in, it's done, it's amazing for a small town, really. It's a mm -hmm. small city and performance with the jazz festival. And right. And And they won't get the loan. They won't give you a loan, right? right? I mean, there's been many, I guess in, the, in this last year, two or three companies that said they were going to come to New Orleans and set up offices. And maybe over there at UNO they were talking. Right, yeah. And yeah. something never has, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't come through. I don't know. Maybe leadership, uh, understand right. the music industry. Maybe right. you should run for mayor. Oh, no. <laughs> I like the golf course. <laughs> I like to play golf. I wish I could find this. I know it's here. I know this is here. It was a concert out here. And it was a printout. It must be on all this stuff like I, I wanted you to see this. Concert for who? It was a concert I had. Jackie Wilson, B.B. King, wow. Aretha. What? Was that the city? It was at City Park. And I know. Does Gary Ruzan do that posters? You know, he does posters. You know, the guy that redoes all those old Cleveland Avenue posters? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. posters? Yeah, you know what? I bet you I've got some posters in there. I saw his daughter once. And she says, um, oh, we got all these posters in there. I said, well, I'd like to get one, you know, just to have. Okay, I'll make sure that you get it. Because I didn't when I when I had posters made, I put them up. I wasn't thinking about saving this. Thing. I wanted to get them out there. I don't know where. Anyway, uh, I'll see that you get one. I'll see. I'll open up. And let you. I never heard from him anymore. Yeah. You know what happened when Mr. Gosperin died? We found out his name wasn't Gosperin. It isn't Leo. That was his brother-in-law. I mean, his father-in-law's name. And when he took over the business, he just kept the name. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was Leo Gosperin. Yeah. 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 So what was his name? I don't know. <laughs> Gossaran. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Gossaran. Mr. Gossaran, yeah. Uh, we, we really appreciate your time and sharing it because uh, okay. I was thinking you're the music person, but uh, I think you were central to getting uh, Mayor Mori elected that first time. And we yeah, appreciate your insights. Well, I felt honored when he called because I felt like I was really being a part of the city and something different. Yeah. And I was just blessed to be able to have that radio there. That's that was it, you know, to have that to have that to have that tool to work with, you know. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. I have a, I have oh yeah, question. yeah. All right, George. Sure. Um, you said earlier, you mentioned earlier that you um, you like Lou Andrew, you like Lou Andrew, and mm -hmm. it was um, Eric talked about how it was because that's just such a dynamic figure. I was wondering, just personally, what if um that year, if it was a Moon Andrew and let's say a less worthy um black opponent, what probably you know, who would you would have supported? Moon. Uh, I think if Dutch hadn't run, uh, Nat Kiefer would have been the mayor. Yeah, Nat Kiefer was quite a guy. Yeah, he and he was disappointed because he really, he really, because the black community was going to go with him. So when when Dutch jumped in, that knocked Nat out. But yeah. I hadn't heard that. I thought it would have been Tony Morrison. I didn't know. Oh, Nat, Nat was Nat, Nat was yeah. Downtown. Downtown. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. All right. Thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs>